Newton's Laws of Motion. Have you heard of Sir Isaac Newton? He was an amazing scientist from England. Born way back in 1642, during his 85-year life, he became known as a natural philosopher, scientist, mathematician, astronomer, religious scholar, author, and much more. Whew! That's a lot of different jobs. Can you imagine today if you told someone you were a doctor, a scientist, a teacher, an astronaut, a psychologist, and a writer? That's a lot of jobs for one person to have. We would probably think someone like that was very smart. Well, Isaac Newton was. When Sir Isaac Newton lived, not a lot was known about the way the world works. Subjects like physics and math were not yet taught. So, people's understanding about how objects moved around was very limited. But then people began to make huge and important discoveries in science, math, and in other subjects. We now call this time the Scientific Revolution. And because Isaac Newton made a lot of discoveries himself, we often call him the father of modern science. You may think you've never heard of Mr. Newton, but maybe you've heard the story about the man who fell asleep under an apple tree and an apple fell off and hit him in the head. Sound familiar? Well, that man was Sir Isaac Newton. We aren't sure if the story of the apple tree is true or not, but it's said that's when Newton discovered gravity. He was the first to use gravity to explain the way the planets move, why the tides of the ocean occur, and other events that happen all around us. In 1687, Newton published a book he wrote called Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. That book inspired a lot of people. In it, he talks about gravity, how things move, math, light, and sight. Isaac Newton really loved to learn and study how things work. He was good at it too. So good that we will study things he taught us, like his three laws of motion. These three laws have been tested and proven over and over for hundreds of years. So you can bet they're pretty solid. Let's find out why. Newton's first law says that an object in motion tends to stay in motion while an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted on by some force. So what does that mean? Well, the first part of this law means a pair of snow skis aren't going to go anywhere without a skier in them forcing them to move. Or a soccer ball is going to remain in the same place on a field until someone kicks it. The other part of Newton's law means that the skis and the soccer ball are going to keep moving until they are stopped by someone or something. But all objects tend to continue doing what they are doing, moving or staying still. Most objects will remain at a rest or a standstill. Look at a book or a table. This is inertia or a tendency to do nothing or to remain unchanged. But not all objects are the same. Bigger and heavier objects have more inertia, which requires more force to move them. In other words, a more massive object like a table has a greater tendency to resist changes in its state of motion than a book does. Or it's harder to move a table than a book sitting on that table. A moving object, like a ball rolling along a level surface, will eventually slow down and stop due to friction. Friction is also a force. It is the resistance that one surface or an object encounters when moving against another. For example, trying to push a couch that's sitting on a fluffy rug is harder than pushing that same couch on a smooth floor. That's because there is more friction or resistance caused by the rug than the smooth floor. Air resistance is another force that affects moving objects. If you've ever tried to walk outside on a very windy day, you'll discover it's harder to move with the wind blowing in your face. A sailboat uses air resistance to maneuver the boat by catching wind in its sails. Once an object begins to move, its speed or how fast it's moving can be measured. If the object's speed stays the same, it has a constant speed. So, whether an object is moving or staying the same, it can't change what it's doing, unless something forces it to. 
For Newton's second law, he came up with an important equation. It says that force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. Let's talk about each of those words and how they work together. When you apply force to something, it means that you try to move it or stop it from moving. To put it simply, you can either throw a football to move it or you can catch a football to stop it. Can you think of some things that you frequently move or stop from moving? How about a swing or a car? What about a door when you open or shut it? Let's talk about mass. Mass is the amount of stuff that makes up something. Everything has mass, from a pen to a pillow and a pickle to a person. However, mass is different from item to item. You're going to have far more mass than a pickle. But what about two things that are about the same size? Can they have different amounts of mass? If you said yes, you're right. Can you think of two things that are about the same size, but their weights are very different? How about a balloon and a bowling ball? The balloon is full of air making it very light, where a bowling ball is filled with resin or graphite making it very heavy. This is important to know, because the more mass something has, the harder it is to move it or stop it. Imagine trying to stop a soccer ball at the bottom of a hill it just rolled down. Now imagine if it were a bowling ball. Mass matters! Acceleration means a change in speed or direction of something. Have you ever gone sledding at the top of a large hill? After you take off, do you notice it doesn't take long before you start speeding up? That's acceleration! It's the same thing with the bowling ball and the soccer ball rolling down a hill. Because the bowling ball has more mass, it's going to roll faster. Because of the speed of acceleration and the mass of the bowling ball, it will take more force to stop it at the bottom too. That's how force, mass, and acceleration work together. How cool is that? Newton's second law also talks about unbalanced forces. That means when you throw a football, the football is moving quicker than the air around it. That's because the force is stronger than the air resistance, gravity, and friction. Eventually, gravity will stop it. Finally, Newton realized that no matter what the mass of an object and the force applied, the acceleration will always be in the same direction of the force. So, when you decide to sled down a large hill, make sure you're up for it, because once you go down, there's no coming back up. Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Or whatever force you give to something, it will give that same force back to you. Jumping on a diving board is an example of Newton's third law. As you exert force on the diving board by jumping, in return the diving board pushes back on you with the same amount of force you gave it. If a boxer punches a punching bag with 10 pounds of force, in return his fist is going to receive 10 pounds of force. The forces will always be equal, just opposite. Let's watch this cannonball being shot out of a cannon. Did you notice that the cannon moved backwards when the cannonball shot forwards? That backward movement is the cannon's reaction to the action of shooting the cannonball forward. They are opposite movements, but equal forces. Friction is a reaction force or something that holds back something else that is moving forward. Remember the rug and the couch? You may not have realized it, but you and I are part of Newton's laws every day. You might even say we put them in motion. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.